Next, let's talk about something that's even more depressing than, you know, being ravaged by a horde of flesh-eating zombies. United. Manchester United, my beloved club, unfortunately, have now concluded this very protracted, um, purposely stretched out Manchester United sale where the Glazers initially made it seem like they were open to a full sale. But in the end, it seems like after the six month mark, they were only really interested in selling a portion of the club, which is really depressing for a fan like myself who just wanted a fresh start. I didn't really care if it was Sergio Ratcliffe. I didn't really care if it was somebody else and not the Qatari group. I just wanted a fresh start. We've had the Glazers for more than 20 years. It's been an abject failure for me personally, but even if it wasn't a failure, I just want a fresh start and want some new eyes, a new vision in terms of leading the club forward because at the moment, considering the level of competition that exists in the in the you know domestically and in Europe, um, it just seems like we are lagging behind. And the more that we have the Glazers in charge running the club, the further behind we will lag because we have 20 plus years of experience and evidence to show that they never make the the decisions that will eventually lead us to have having to last having long term consistent um, success or competitiveness on the level that we kind of want. It doesn't exist. So I was wearing the full change for that reason alone, and mostly to be really soppy to sort of like fall back in love with my club again because for the longest time i refused to engage with the social media of manchester united i refused to buy any official merchandise um i refused to buy you know um any subscription to their mutv which i used to do before like all these things that i did prior i refused to because i don't want to enable or give money to the glazers who have done nothing right by the united um fan base except for by players to you know temporarily appease us at certain points but when it comes to long-term um f planning for success or having us consistently compete because i don't think any united fan with sense is thinking we're deserving of trophies because we're not no one is but we just want to compete like we did before we want the seasons to actually count for something are we actually going to compete for the league are we actually going to compete for the champions league for our other domestic cups no we're just there to make up the numbers but essentially we're not going to really compete or push these teams and we don't really have a belief that's going to happen unless all the teams have like a chelsea season then we might take it and even then it's no guarantee that we will so the really sad news to come out of over this past weekend has been the following courtesy of sky sports news it says Sergio Ratcliffe to buy 1.3 billion for 25% stake in Man United. So the whole full sale thing is gone. Our preferred bidder, if you are somebody that wanted a full sale in Sheikh Jassim, has now left. Now it's only Sergio Ratcliffe and he's only taking 25%. When the original story that came out said he wanted to have like 59 or 49, now it's down to 25%. And now you have all these um, Man United propaganda PR machine Twitter accounts, which are incredibly annoying, which makes sense because we're one of the biggest companies in the world. So it makes sense that there's these sort of like weird accounts that sort of exist to give United fans news, but also to kind of do the bidding of certain people within the club. It's very odd how it works at the moment, but certain accounts will post certain things where certain journalists who will have the ear of the owners or people on the inside who want a certain message to get out. It's oddly weird, but I find it very interesting that since this really depressing news that Sergio Rekhoff is taking over the club, and if it all goes through and gets voted in, I think on Thursday for 25% only, suddenly now we're seeing all these buzzwords pop up on the timeline about structure, about Sergio Ratcliffe taking over the footballing side of the club and having full control of it and blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of that kind of, you know, talk that you'd see a lot of fans like myself and others say on social media that we think is a, the crux of our issues, which generally is about the lack of, you know, structure and organisation at the club that's basically led to us being in a position where we don't really run that well. And obviously that's effectively affecting our performance on the pitch and not leading us to be as successful as we can be the club is now basically saying hey even though it's not the full sale that you wanted and we did kind of do a bit of a switcheroo on you this guy is going to come in and fix the things that you want you want fixed that's the things that you're worried about the structure all of a sudden they're throwing out those terms so to me it feels like a little bit of a ruse and to be fair i don't believe anything that they say and they've got 20 plus years of 
documented evidence. They've got 20 plus years of work experience on their CV that shows us that they disappoint us at every single hurdle. Every single point, they always disappoint and let down the fans to the point where you're thinking to yourself, these guys don't care about the club. They only care about the money they make from the club, which is probably the reason why they also refuse to full sell. Because looking at their portfolio, the things that the Glazer families own, Man United, although it's maybe one of the most performing, worst performing teams or whatever they operate on, we still make a lot of money um, in general compared to the debt we have and shit, especially considering who we have in charge and the stadium and lack of resource, all that sort of stuff. We still make a very good amount of money. And most likely, unless a disaster happens, we're never going to get relegated. So we're most likely going to finish within the top six, top four, most seasons. We're one of the biggest clubs in the world. So you can understand why the Glazers wouldn't want to sell because that is an ATM, quote unquote, for life. They can keep on withdrawing money from the Bank of Manchester United forever and ever and ever without really investing any of their own money, which they haven't. Right? The whole entire tenureship of ownership, sorry, of the Glazers, they've never invested one pound one dollar of their own money into the club which is kind of crazy when you think about it right they've not really been personally invested or wanted to put their money in the line at any fucking point and that just goes to show how disinterested they are in the sport and success of the club but also goes to show the amount of crazy money this club must make um to um obviously allow them to do such a thing but some of the reports and some of the information from this article really do make you super depressed. So it says as follows. Surgeon Bracket will pay $1.3 billion for 25% of Man United after Qatari businessman Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al-Tahini withdrew from the bidding process. Sheikh Jassim's offer, which valued the club at more than $5 billion, was believed to be the only bid for 100% of the club. But it's understood that the Qatari sit valuation was not sufficient for the Glazers, who have owned the club since 2005. Also, Sheikh Jassim has withdrawn for the process. So, sorry. Um, the other proposal is to buy 25% of the club by Ratcliffe, who has said that he has been a fan of the club since childhood, with a deal beginning to be agreed, or needing to be agreed, sorry, by the United Board this coming week, allegedly Thursday. So that's the really crazy part. It sounds like Sergeon Ratcliffe has overpaid for 25%, which makes sense because I remember at the time, at the time I remember precisely, the Glazers' language when they put the club up for sale, quote-unquote, was very odd because it sounded like to me that they wanted investment. It didn't sound like they wanted a full sale. It sounded like what they wanted in an ideal world, which is crazy considering the economic situation we're in, the, the you know, whatever, like, whatever you believe but we're definitely in some sort of economical situation um what you wouldn't un there's not a lot of money available out there even in terms of like vc and stuff right there's not a lot of people investing big huge amounts out there people are being a little bit more you'd say risk adverse and considering how poorly we're doing on the pitch and considering the money that would be needed to get us back up to the level that we want it didn't seem likely that there'd be an investor that'd be willing to invest a huge amount for very little ownership of the club or very little say-so of the club. It doesn't make any sense, really. So I always thought that was a bit of a pipe dream. But in my head, I also thought it's savvy businessman type of negotiation tactics, whatever, from the Glazers, because what they always wanted, I felt like, was to sell chunks or small pieces of the club along a very stretched out time so they could get more money in the end. So essentially, if they give... 25% up to Sir Jim Ratcliffe, they could then, in theory, still collect money from the club and later on down the line, if, let's say, by a miracle, 25% ownership for, for Jim Ratcliffe means that he can do the things he wants to do to get the club back to where it needs to get to, restore the former glory, blah, blah, blah. Let's just imagine it goes well. It's not, but let's just imagine it does. Technically, if the club performs better, they can obviously go out there and try to get more investors to invest for a higher price point than what Sir Jim Ratcliffe paid so they could effectively if they wanted to sell 25% again or less than that or more than that for way more than 1.3 billion that um, Sir Jim Ratcliffe play, paid and then in the end sell the remaining stock for another increased fee so they could easily if they wanted to which is kind of crazy to think that but they could easily if they wanted to think in their heads we could maybe get 20 billion for this club over a long period of time if they wanted to really you know um, drip sell it 
piece by piece by piece and obviously drain the club of resources, drain the club of any sort of joy. But if they wanted to go that, down that route of being ultra greedy, ultra menacing, ultra pieces of shit, which they clearly are, they could do that and bleed the club dry over a long period of time. And I suspect most likely that will end up happening because to reject 5 billion, and I think most of it was in cash or whatnot, off the mark means that most likely their true valuation, which they didn't want to say, because probably it would make bad for headlines and whatnot, was 10 billion or somewhere around that mark, maybe eight. So, so by what the article is saying, Sheikh Jassim already offered over the valuation of the club, the current valuation of the club, considering everything that's going on with it, I think someone said is around the three to four billion. Sheikh Jassim offered more than the actual value for it and still wasn't given it. Still wasn't, you know, still couldn't conclude the deal. So clearly the Glazers think the club is worth more than what it's being valued at. They think it's probably worth north of six billion, which is fucking wild considering the state of disrepair left the club in. And again, the funny thing about it is if the Glazers cared 10% more than they do about the footballing success of the club, they could maybe have gotten the money that they wanted. If they would have invested more into the infrastructure, into recruitment, into sales, and removed some of the idiots who are in charge of doing that from their side of things, like the Joels and Avrams of this fucking world who really do have the final say so at the club, because that's really the major issue that we have. There's just too many lines of management and boardroom people you have to get through to, to fucking ratify and sign things on the dotted line. Every agent that's kind of dealt with United has always said on podcasts that one of the main things that they kind of hear back from people is that it's really hard to work with United. Unless somebody's going to make good money, it's just hard to get fucking deals over the line because they just have to go through so many intermediaries they have to kind of deal with um, in order to get things ratified where other clubs have like a very clear, easy line of communication um, or like kind of approval. You can kind of go through one or two, three steps and whatnot and it's kind of done. With United, there's a million and one people involved. They all kind of feel like they have a sense of you know ownership duty and power in every sort of role they stretch it out for their own good men themselves look better as you know in most corporations but in the end it leads to delay after delay after delay after flipping delay and it is so honestly annoying it really is but let's continue reading the article here um Ratcliffe and his company NEOS expected to run Man United for football operations as part of the deal to purchase 25 percent the petrochemicals billionaire initially wanted to buy um the gain of 67 percent of shareholding so the interesting thing about this last sentence is that if you consider back to the beginning Sergeant Records has said that he is a somewhat boyhood fan of United I think that's a lie because I don't think any boyhood fan of United will be comfortable or happy. Number one, getting in bed or working with the Glazers and number two, doing it at such a small percentage because there's not a part of me that thinks he's ever going to have the control or the ownership that he thinks he's going to have for 25%. The Glazers have proved over the years that they have a weird refusal to let go of the things they're not good at doing just because I guess it's their job. It's strange because on paper, or just from the outside looking in, it's clear to see that the football operational side of our business, of our club, is the worst performing part of it. We can't buy well, we can't sell well, our squad is full of a mashup of players from, you know, 10 different fucking managers, bloody blah, 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 there's toxic fucking, you know, dressing room culture, all that stuff you'd think is footballing issues that could get sorted out if you brought football people in the club maybe simplify the process maybe had some things in, in, you know maybe implement some process whatever there may be you think that that sort of stuff is rectifiable and you'd also think if you're an owner that doesn't care about that sort of thing and sort of cares about your money surely you'd want to get people involved in the football side of things you could deal with it but the glazers over a period of time have kind of shown a um a uh they've kind of shown a refusal to relinquish the control that they have that they haven't been good at like look how long it took us to get rid of ed woodward we always thought ed woodward was a big but boogeyman at fucking man united that was the reason why we were where we were and of course he leaves and the mistakes keep continuing we technically got a football director now in john murto and obviously darren fletcher is some sort of technical sporting director type of role but has anything really changed not really 
We still don't buy well. We still don't sell well. The squad is still lopsided, unbalanced. Um, again, like I said, many players from 10 different fucking managers. It really doesn't make any sense. So clearly, there's an issue there. So Sergeant Bracker thinking he's going to be able to correct that 20 plus years of bad decision making with 25%. Not going to happen, bro. Not going to happen. He's going to be a glorified employee. He's going to be a glorified employee. And most likely, you'll start hearing murmurs about him not being happy, of not being given carte blanche to do what he wants, always having to revert and go back to Joe or Avram Grant or whatever his fucking name is to Glazer, sorry, to kind of get things over the line. It's going to be absolutely a horror show. I guarantee you. Um, And then also, we got here a list. Sorry, from um, Gary Neville, 16 questions of main minority investment, which is a fairly decent list. So big up him for actually putting this out there once the news came out. I guess he tried to, okay, cool. It's disappointing news. The guitarists aren't involved, but let's try and get to the bottom of, to, of what that minority stake means. Like, what are the actual deliverables? What can the fans expect to see? Because there's a lot of, you know, buzzword talk on social, but there's not a lot of concrete kind of specification on like what is 25 percent what does that mean for the club how does that affect the running of the club bloody blah, blah 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 so some of the questions he has here i'll read quite a few it says what does the distribution of the funds look like is it all cash being taken out of the club what glazers are going to what glazers are going or is the family um going to be dilution how does it impact the ny shareholders does the executive stay the same does the sporting decide stay the same about the manager who within the board has support sporting control are the future the, the, the um, deal dilutions clauses with the Glazer family in the, in the deal and married to a shareholder main is maxed out on the credit and debt how is this deal going to change the capital structure and financial status is any further debt being placed is any debt being paid off how does the deal impact the board comp composition like really great aunt questions here which are probably never going to get answered but big up guy never putting them out there and then this is a scathing review scathing review for one of the sources um at fucking sky sports news that really does put into really clear way why this deal is pretty horrible for united fans and why it's probably bad for jim ratcliffe himself so <clears throat> it says the following say Sim offered them almost double the market capitalization he has a cash he was a cash buyer he was going to clear all the debt so oh my god i'm just getting angry reading it he was going to clear all the debt there would have been no new debt and he was going to put in another 1.4 billion for the stadium and the team. And I'm hearing rumors on the timeline that he was looking to sign Mbappe and shit. Oh my God. Um, all that still wasn't enough for the Glazers. What we're left with now is almost a year and someone who is going to overpay for 25% of the club. They're arguably the greatest, most historic club in the planet. And after a year, there's just one bidder that can only stump up enough for 25%, which obviously, in my opinion, is a scathing review and indictment of where the club is at the moment. It's not worthwhile, especially in the financial situation, economic situation we're in now in the world markets. It's just not financially prudent to spend that kind of money on a stock like Man United, considering the amount of work that will need to get done to improve it right the the stadium the training facilities all these sort of things the youth set up they're gonna cost a lot of money to get right so the the glazers refusal to invest in those parts of the business of the club and kind of have it in a state of disrepair has what has negative impact their ability to sell it for the price that they want right it's kind of there's sort of like a weird karmic retribution they're going on but the only people that suffer are us the fans because the glazers don't give a fuck because eventually, they'll still get their money that they want. They'll just have to get it over a longer period of time. And they'll also have to hope in the back of their heads that Ericsson Hogg is their Sir Alex Ferguson. Because that's one thing I've said from the beginning. I've always said that considering how terrible our owners are, we are never going to win a major trophy until the Glazers leave. Or if we're ever lucky to stumble across Sir Alex Ferguson region. I don't see us ever winning a major trophy which counts as an FA Cup, a Champions League, or a Premier League title. Forget Europa League and fucking League Cup, I don't give a fuck. But we're not going to win those three major ones ever again if we don't get rid of the Glazers. Or we find a Sir Alex Ferguson regen, which is obviously super unlikely too. So in, the, in, in essence, Glazers fucked themselves. We continue. Ratcliffe is overpaying and any valuation higher than Sheikh Jassim's is sheer lunacy. 
if he can only afford to buy 25% of the, to start with, which obviously is 25% and it's also not his own money. Think about that. Who is going to pay for the new stadium? Who is going to fix the leaking roof? Who is going to pay for a new training centre, new players and community projects? We don't know. Um, United can keep, can't keep up with Brighton these days. <laughs> Never mind Manchester City and Liverpool and Arsenal. And I don't even think about the likes of Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. And if they're going with Ratcliffe, they get yet another shareholder. How does that help decision making? Where is the new vision, new ambition? Where is the new engagement with the fans? Sheikh Justin tried to bridge the gap between reality and lunacy. Valuation, he did his best. And the funny thing about it, there's a quote going around on social media at the moment, especially from all the fan forums, right? And big up this picture, which is super depressing, but I think accurately displays the place that we're at now as a club, to, to be honest, right? This sort of like, you know, you've got Joel and Avram Grant and you're standing outside the Old Trafford and it's burning and you're just watching it from afar, just smiling, right? But there's a quote here from the United Plug Twitter account. I forgot which especially it was, but there's a particular quote that really disturbed me, but also kind of got to show you how vindictive and awful this Glazer ownership are because there's one of these quotes that's coming out from United that the Glazers weren't impressed when Sheikh Jassim first came out with an offer or was putting his hat into the ring to buy the club and he said something along the lines of oh he wants to restore United to the former glories and obviously that kind of quote on the timeline for the fans was super encouraging it kind of really made us hope that we were going to finally get you know over this period of darkness has kind of been you know fucking befolden on the club over time but i also had a feeling at the time considering how vindictive and weird the fucking glazers are it wouldn't sit well with them and quite soon after it did come out a quote again from the glazers also that they didn't like the stuff that Sheikh Jassim was saying on his side about the club and what he wanted to do and i think since that time you never really heard much more from him in terms of concrete plans, what he wants to do, because they didn't want to look like they were being embarrassed because it was also a weird way in their head. They felt like it was um, a criticism of their ownership. So they didn't like how it sounded. So even though they were trying to sell it, they were trying to control the narrative of how they were selling it. They weren't selling it because they were bad owners or he did, did a horrible job. They were selling it because... They just wanted the money, basically, kind of thing. And they didn't do a bad job. They didn't want everyone to kind of say that or lead to that sort of thinking in the press, which is absolutely crazy. But it does go to show just how fucking horrible they are as owners and just how unwilling they are, really, to admit that they've kind of done things wrong and rectify the issue, which is essentially let go of the club and kind of move on. They don't want to. So obviously the news over the weekend, which is the one that hurt the most, was this, about six Simba withdrawals from the protests, from the process, sorry. Um, the final bid that says here listed was 5.2 billion and had increased the final bid in April. Six Simba was willing to invest $8 billion. Um, six Simba record is going to get the 25% that he wants in the club. And it keeps scrolling up here. I'm going to find the quote here that they were talking about it, but it was fairly depressing because it did go to show that the Glazers were never really intended on selling the club full, which kind of makes you think that maybe, 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 maybe um, they might be in some trouble for some sort of stock manipulation because they did give the impression they wanted to sell it in full. But if you were a savvy enough fan that's got your ear to the ground, you would have maybe had a bit of a squeaky bum time six months in. It's been a year process, right? Um, it's been too long. It's been too dragged out. I think you would already start getting nervous after six months and there was no indication that there was going to be a final, you know, um, a final line in the sand. They always kind of kept moving the goalposts and there was never really clarification on where we were in the process. So I think mostly they were always never going to sell it. They just wanted to have, to field as many bidders as possible. That didn't happen. And then they took the deal that kind of served their best interest going forward, basically. And if anything... As savvy businessmen as they are, they played the fans like a fiddle. They gave us hope, which essentially took the heat off them for a while. You didn't hear as many Glazers out chants because they were in the process of trying to sell the club. And then it kind of, you know, laid them, kind of made the, allowed them to kind of lay low. And then once the deal went through, they immediately started pushing out news about, oh, the structure, the sport inside, blah, 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 blah. Nonsense, right? So it says here, um, there's going to be a board meeting on Thursday coming up. Uh, Ineos Group um, is set to run the Man United sporting plans. It means a new co-owner will be able to decide on manager, director of football in similar positions. Of course, it doesn't matter because the people in charge who actually ratify the decision-making process are the ones that are the problem, really. As terrible and as average as John Murtaugh and Dara Fletcher are as a duo, it's not really their fault 
that we can't get rid of players or sign players. It's the fact that they have to go through so many hoops to get those things done is why we're in a position that we're in. But again, what do I know? You got Jim Sir Jim uh, Ratcliffe here looking like you know um, the snake that he is. Unfortunately, um, you got more pictures here of Eric Ten Hag. Let me get a bit where it's a shake to him. Yeah, this is so. Again, we, we don't know Texas for facts, but I think there's some truth in this. This is Kershaw of Time Sport. It says, Qatar Sheikh Jassim's promise to restore Man United to its quote-unquote former glories with a completely debt-free purchase did not amuse the Glazers, who saw the wording as implied criticism of their own tenure. So that own, that statement from Sheikh Jassim to give the fans hope and to sort of lay the groundwork and put his flag in the ground for what his tenure would have been like is up what kind of essentially led to the refusal from the Glazers to have him t take over the club because it would have embarrassed them. And I think we've always had that sort of feeling when it came to director of football. We've always kind of felt as fans that all these names that were floated, all these ideas that were kind of banded around, never kind of got put through or never got implemented the way they should have got implemented because the owners didn't want to get shown up. They didn't want this new person to come in and do what they couldn't do in such a short space of time, which is probably would have happened, right? You get a new you get a new owner in. They all they, they organize the club in a way that would maximize our ability to be successful on the pitch, and most likely the changes would be felt, you know, immediately. You could Im immediately see the difference in profile of player we were signing, how quickly the squad was changing, blah de blah blah blah. You could definitely see. Okay, cool. There's something afoot here. So they didn't want that. So that's the thing that to me is the most depressing side of it is that we've got owners who have kind of, you know, essentially turned United into their own little thing that they could do whatever they want to it with without any real consideration to how the fans feel. And it kind of makes you feel hopeless. It makes you feel depressed, really. And if anything, like I said, it's a hope that kills you because this was the only solution that we had to really get United back to any semblance of former glories that's why it's been so difficult for me to kind of finish the david beckham documentary because it reminds you of just how great we once were and again it's not that we won everything and anything all the time we just competed it was fun to be a united fan because we were always pushing the top teams to the end we probably didn't win enough champions leagues to be honest considering how you know well we performed in that competition our squad the managers blah 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 all that stuff we didn't win enough enough trophies around that sort of time so we kind of fell short a lot of times even if we say like fa cups i always think an fa cup our fa cup record in general isn't as probably great as it probably should be as well but it was a competition it was the going for blow to blow with some of the greatest clubs in the country some of the greatest players playing for those clubs and vice versa in europe and now we're seeing our club essentially still be there through name alone and through ability to sign and having our team the odd game winner. But it's not really anything. Like none United fan with sense really thinks that we're ever going to win the league. No United fan with sense really does think we're going to win the Champions League. It's all just a pipe dream. But you'd obviously rather prepare, sorry, you'd rather prefer to be in a Champions League than you would be in Europa League. And you'd rather could prefer to compete for the league title than try to play for top four. But even then, top four is probably still more valuable than fucking finishing, you know, first, especially for managers and shit. I don't know. It's all a fucking big mess. But in general, um, the disappointment is real. But again, not surprised. I think like my like other fans out there, I generally did start having really bad feelings for this as soon as it passed the six month stage. For me, I was like, okay, this is feeling like the standard sort of like glazers approach to things where they sort of give fans a full sense of hope to basically get the steam off of them, the heat off of them. And then sooner rather than later, they'll end up doing what they always wanted to do, which is what fuck up the fans and disappoint them. And in the end, we're going to be disappointed. So Jim Ratcliffe isn't going to get what he thinks he's going to get for 25%. And we're going to be stuck in the same position once again. So I guess as a fan, you're led to sit there and think, what's, what can you do to change it? You could obviously do stuff like boycotting the games, not actually going to the games, um, not actually going to the mega store. That's never going to happen because our fan base is just too big and people just love buying shit and don't really understand how to protest effectively. So that's never going to happen. So the only other option would be maybe on the pitch. If we were starting to like, you know, if we started free falling and we ended up getting relegated or close to relegating, that might actually force the Glazers to actually sell the club in full. 
you never know because then it'll be performing badly on the stock exchange they won't be able to get the money that they want out of the club blah 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 blah, blah and they might want to cut their losses and move but even then i won't be surprised if they like didn't refuse to kind of jump off that sinking ship it wouldn't surprise me it really wouldn't so it really is a shame where we are at the moment not surprising though and i don't know man i really don't know it's just it just kind of breaks my heart i'm not gonna lie because united is just never ever gonna i don't know if we're cursed i don't know if this is kind of like the sort of like if this is what you're meant to get what once you're a club that has kind of won everything this is sort of like the natural place that you're meant to fall into where it's meant to be like 20 plus years of hurt um while all the clubs around you figure things out um, i'm not too sure what's going on but for me it really does essentially take out all the emotion from me with the club you know i had a i had i wanted to have a feeling where i had i feel connected with the club again where maybe i'd feel like oh here's an opportunity to fall back in love with the club but no more that feeling has completely gone um i don't really care for that shit anymore and i'm just gonna watch the games for watching the game's sake but there's not really that connection that i once have with the club anymore it doesn't exist it's kind of is what it kind of is unfortunately so i guess we have to see what happens going forward but that's probably one of the most disappointing bits of news i've had to report in a while and it really did bum me out when i heard it but hey what can you do what can you do so moving on to some other things to talk about here other things to talk about here so over the past